In 1971, the UN established the International Development Strategy for the Second United Nations Development Decade, which included the Least Developed Nations, or LDCs. As of 2016, the UN officially recognises 48 countries in the category of LDCs, Tuvalu, Haiti, Madagascar, Bangladesh and Ethiopia are some of the most vulnerable countries in the world. These five countries are classified by the UN as being the least developed due to their lack of human resources, small gross national income and their high degree of economic vulnerability. The world's climate will transform dramatically over the course of the next 100 years. Due to LDC's lack of resources and finances, they are left exposed and vulnerable to the extensive damage caused by climate change. When compared to larger level developed countries, we have the money and the resources to combat large scale change. The LDCs are at a major disadvantage. LDCs have a large percentage of their populations in the low socio-economic sector. Because of this, they are on a greater risk of human losses from diseases, such as malaria. Increased fluctuations in weather, such as hurricanes, displaces affected populations, and the standing water creates green grounds for mosquitoes carrying malaria. But it is not only risk of disease that will increase, but also risk of starvation. Countries such as Madagascar have high rates of hurricanes, which come in and destroy farmland. Provided by the US Census Bureau in 2014, stated that our world population would grow to 9.3 billion by 2050. At this time, it is predicted that the population will rely increasingly upon food products, which will cause the agricultural systems to struggle under pressure to produce. Considering how much global warming has affected our planet over the last century, in another 34 years, our farms may not be able to produce what they previously could. This will greatly affect the economic progression of LDCs. This importance is stressed in Bangladesh, where the agricultural sector accounts for 20% of its GDP and employs 65% of the labour force for the country. Climate change is currently increasing planet Earth's core temperature, leading to changes in seasonal development around the world. This is revealed through analysis by GCM, General Circulation Models, which predict an average annual temperature increase of 1.0 Celsius by 2030, 1.4 Celsius by 2050, and 2.4 Celsius by 2100, as well as an annual average rainfall increase of 3.8% by 2030, 5.6% by 2050, and 9.7% by 2100. In 1991, the UN included Madagascar into the LDC category since it has one of the highest rates of cyclones in Africa, which cause considerable damage to farmland. Cyclones can cause large-scale damage to infrastructure and contaminate water supplies, whilst increasing risk to waterborne diseases, but cyclones can also cause starvation. Countries such as Madagascar that have a large percentage of farming population rely on the success of crops for both economic stability but also for food security. It is estimated that approximately 5 million people in Madagascar are affected by weather disasters such as cyclones and flooding. Madagascar's high level of poverty and lack of food is a result of the high frequency of cyclones which hit the country's farmland. It is predicted that climate change will create stronger and therefore more damaging cyclones in the future, which threatens Madagascar's already high vulnerability. Tuvalu is a small group of islands found between Hawaii and Australia. It is the fourth smallest and third least populated country in the world. Tuvalu's vulnerable ecology is threatened greatly by climate change, with its small economy increasing its risk. As a result of its vulnerability, migration is being considered. The government demands compensation and change to combat climate change, as Tuvalu has a GDP of 37 million and no national currency, which limits the country from developing and controlling macroeconomic policy. Therefore, Tuvalu is vulnerable to outside economic trends, and as a result of the limited land supply, technology and economy, Tuvalu has a low ability to adapt to climate change. Unlike other Pacific islands, Tuvalu does not use agriculture for commercial purposes. However, fishing is a potential industry, which is itself threatened by climate change. Bangladesh is a low-lying country at the foot of the Himalayan mountains. It is a delta region where the Ganges, Brahmaputra, Chamura and Meghna rivers all meet the ocean. Bangladesh has a population of around 156 million people, with 31.5% living below the poverty line. 
Bangladesh is largely self-sufficient in food production for its population, and its commodities are mainly agricultural in nature. Increase in sea levels, floods, rain, fall, precipitation and temperatures will affect their ability to feed their population and trade. IT is geographically located between the Caribbean Sea and the North Atlantic Ocean. It makes up approximately three-eighths of the island of Hispaniola and shares a border with the Dominican Republic. Its strategic importance is underlined by the footholds of European imperial countries that remain. However, the Panama Canal, the US and Russia, are ideologically divided. The high chain path of the island of Hispaniola sits sandwiched between two fault lines on the divide between the North American tectonic plate and the Caribbean plates. These two fault lines, with striped slip faults, are to the north and south of Haiti. As a consequence, Haiti is particularly vulnerable to earthquakes. Ethiopia is home to more than 100 million people. As a whole country, they only contribute to 0.02% of the annual release of greenhouse gases, yet they are one of the most negatively affected countries due to global warming. Rising sea levels are not an immediate issue in Ethiopia, as it is the most populous landlocked country in the world meaning they are not surrounded by any ocean and are entirely enclosed by land. LDCs are faced with greater challenges to overcome climate change, as Ethiopia is one of the least developed countries in the world, with a per capita income of less than 130 US dollars. In Ethiopia, the negative impacts of climate change are predominantly in the agricultural sector. Agriculture is their biggest production generator, and as of 2006 and 7. This job field was employing over 80% of the working population. Already LDCs, such as Haiti, have suffered imperial exploitation and have been denuded of native vegetation to grow lucrative crops of sugar. This and the introduction of livestock has led to soil exhaustion. Plantations occupy the protected valleys and plains, leaving the hillside the only resort for safe subsistence farming, leading to more land clearing and subsequent soil erosion. Soil degradation and changing tastes led to colonial powers to seek other countries to exploit, and as their influence declined, the US began its own domination of the region. LDCs such as Haiti, Bangladesh and Ethiopia will have great difficulty in growing crops in the near future due to the progression of climate change. Agricultural and other problems caused by flooding are evidence in Bangladesh. Flood seasons, which are necessary for much of Bangladesh's crops, are starting earlier, lasting longer, and increasing in depth. This is resulting in the loss of homes for many coastal living farmers. These farmers are migrating en masse to Dakar, the capital where they are living in slums. Those that remain in the flood regions and rebuilding their homes are suffering from skin infections and waterborne diseases. It is estimated that by 2030, 17% of Bangladesh will be underwater from rising sea levels and northern glaciers. This equates to 17 to 20 million people being displaced due to climate change. People are already migrating to the country's capital, Dakar, as the land becomes uninhabitable due to flooding. Salt residue left over from increased sea levels during the floods means the land becomes unfarmable. Tuvalu's ecology is also dependent on a stable groundwater system to support its population. However, increased salinity caused by storm surges and rising sea levels would further inhibit the ability to grow food. This is because the water from storms would overflow holes in the ground used to grow food sources, such as palaka. Furthermore, storm surges would be even more potent as coral bleaching would erode defences against storm surges. As part of the Pacific Islands, Tuvalu is disproportionately amongst the first countries affected by climate change, with its ecology being in particular danger. Furthermore, the islands have contributed to less than 0.02% of bottom greenhouse gas emissions. Furthermore, the IPCC predicted a sea level rise between 18 to 59 centimetres by 2100, even without considering ice loss from Greenland and Antarctica. Tuvalu's morphology relies on coral, however coral is being eroded as a result of rising sea levels and ocean acidification, known as coral bleaching. Coral is vital for ensuring biodiversity and as a result fish that is a vital food source for Tuvalu will be harder to catch. Buran argues that good governance is needed in order to combat the effects of climate change in Bangladesh. He states that although the Netherlands is more likely to get inundated with water due to rising sea levels, they have good governance for more than three centuries, enabling them to combat climate change from a unilateral angle. 
Bangladesh has suffered numerous government upheavals in this century alone. Climate change not only threatens human life and the economic stability of many ODCs, but also the plant and animal life of countries such as Madagascar. Parasites which harm Madagascar humans will increase in number and change the spatial location as the environment's rainfall and temperature changes. Increased possibility of local Lima extinctions could come from large populations of the most harmful parasites that will benefit from the normal climate. In the past, deforestation has typically been a major factor in harming flora and fauna. However, predictions indicate that climate change by itself will have a major impact on animal and plant life in the future. Even if deforestation stops, the impact of climate change on Madagascan bird species will have considerable damage to their future populations. Concern for human life is important, but conservation of animal life is also paramount when considering that many of these species run the risk of extinction. Protecting the earth's plants and animals should be an important part of any discussion for preventing large-scale damage from climate change. Climate change affects the current bird plants, making them more frequent and possibly more severe due to the melting of polar ice caps. This places more pressure on fault lines and increases the production of magnets. Only 3% of high tea forest remains. This extreme deforestation also increases damage to landslides. Climate change is also contributing to the increase in severity of cyclones and extreme weather events in the region. The degradation of high tea in terms of deforestation and lack of diversity heightens the damaging effects of the results of climate change. In such circumstances, the consequences of the hurricanes and tropical storms to which the region is particularly vulnerable are likely only to intensify. The majority of Ethiopia's agricultural production is farmed by small landowners. The main sector of the economy is provided by these small groups of workmen. Their three main exporting and importing crops are coffee, oil seeds, sugarcane and vegetables. As the country is currently focused primarily upon agriculture, the rainfall heavily dictates their economy. As their climate is categorised as tropical monsoon, this makes them more vulnerable to the negative impacts of climate change due to the unseasonal weather. Their climate change causes extreme events, such as flooding, which destroys the harvest and the continual drought and limited clean water sources, which also limits the production of livestock herds. A common link has been found between climate change and economic growth. As greenhouse gases continue to affect the climate, the harvest will weaken and the population will greatly suffer. Since the 1970s, Earth's population has doubled to more than 7 billion as of 2013. By 2050, the world is expected to house 9 billion people. The LDCs are expected to gain the majority of this premium population as their growth rate is greater than 3% per year. According to a World Bank report, Pacific Island LDCs such as Tuvalu will also be affected by an increased intensity and amount of cyclones, as well as tropical diseases. Decreased crop efficiency and displacement of fish stocks are also more likely. Tufalu is part of the Aosis Alliance of 44 small island states and the PSIDS located in the Pacific Islands that share similar challenges with climate change. As a stakeholder, the Aosis works to lobby to express their opinions to the United Nations through discussion and agreement. However, there was no regular secretariat or budget. As a stakeholder, Ethiopia is a part of ACRA, known as Africa Climate Change Resilience Alliance. The intended goals for this organisation are dispersed over three African countries, identifying each country's different needs. CARE, Save the Children, Oxfam, World Vision and Overseas Development Institute stand by Ethiopia as a supportive alliance. The wealthiest countries are considered the country's opponents due to their immense production of greenhouse gases which are destroying Ethiopia's land. As an LDC, Ethiopia does not have much power in comparison to the rest of the world, but it is one of the worst affected countries due to the rapid possession of global warming. In 2006, three stakeholder discussion forums were held across Africa as part of the project Food and Water Security Under Global Change, Developing Adaptive Capacity with a Focus on Rural Africa. Representatives of the government, civil society, the business sector and local communities were in attendance the aim of creating policies about climate change adaption. As a result of their small economy and lack of exports, Tuvalu is particularly vulnerable to climate change, and people are considering relocating. 
The government of Tuvalu has raised forced migration during the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change. In 2002, New Zealand granted 75 migrants a year. Although their reasons for migrating were due to the economy, this will change as living becomes increasingly difficult. As sea levels continue to rise, Tuvalu will lose its sovereignty and culture due to the pressure to assimilate. Conflict is also a possibility, with social disturbance caused by mass migration. Haiti could be seen as an experiment to model the effects of climate change and provide an environment to test potential solutions. The island is still recovering from a devastating earthquake in January 2010 and Cyclone Matthew in October 2015 further decimated the country. One of the poorest nations in the world, Global Finance in October 2016 reported Haiti at 20, Australia at 171 and the US at 177. As early as 1945, the Moyen Report reported that if soil degradation continued, it would be impossible for agricultural production to provide even essentials of life for growing populations. In Haiti, the situation did not receive sufficient attention, and after World War II, development focusing on industrialization and not food production created a situation where in 1991, food importation increased by 23% of national consumption. In recent years, tourism has increased further, impacting on the environment. Cruise ships pollute the waters around Haiti, and the Royal Caribbean International has a long-term lease on the port of Brother Deep. The 2010 earthquake did not allow the reassessment of the future for Haiti. U.S. trade preferences that are focused on once again adopting, exporting, and manufacturing as the means to earn money and import food rather than try and repair the environment and regain self-sufficiency in food production. Global warming in Ethiopia is damaging the land, raising temperatures and causing extreme floods and droughts. This effect will lead to issues in produce, consequently as the population grows the demand for food will increase and the pressure on production will cause significant issues leading to famine. The increase in population may lead to an unachievable growing demand for food, a companion by changes in dietary requirements. Instability of agricultural production is economically, socially, and environmentally crippling Ethiopia, and as climate change progresses, these issues will only worsen. In summary, Ethiopia already struggles severely to provide a livable environment for their population, due to their lack of economic development, unstable infrastructure, and an imbalanced climate. The effects of climate change will cause further distress and hardships among the Ethiopian people. The destruction of crops and livestock will compromise the country's food security and will consequently deteriorate the economy, leading to immense poverty and outbreak of disease. In Bangladesh, the increase of flooding, precipitation and rainfall will result in loss of farmable land, loss of homes, increased soil salinity, resulting in crop degradation, mass migration and subsequent overpopulation of slums in Dakar. The temperature increase will result in change of crop types, decrease in sustainability of crops, increase in waterborne diseases and skin infections, and decrease in fishing sustainability. To solve the problem of climate change, the governments of DLCs decide to make its concerns heard and suggest strategies to combat climate change. This is seen in Tuvalu, when the PSIDS urged the US to hold yearly meetings addressing climate change, stressing that action must be taken to address the security concerns of this issue. During the 64th meeting of the UN, Tuvalu asked to renew and increase nations' adherence to drastically decrease greenhouse gases. Stating that the US and other major countries would legally commit to following reduction strategies, although Tuvalu was supported by other island countries, it was not supported by China, India or Saudi Arabia. To address the issue of a small economy and challenging climate change, the Tuvalu Trust Fund was established by the Government of Australia, New Zealand and Tuvalu. Its intent was to mitigate and combat the effects of climate change, providing $65 million from 1987 to 2007. The Bangladeshi government has been able to establish the NAPA, National Adaption Programme of Action, and the BCCSAP, Bangladeshi Climate Change Strategy and Action Plan, to seriously consider how climate change will affect Bangladesh and what can be done to combat and work with new climate conditions. The two main strategic areas of target for the ACRA, Africa Climate Change Resilience Alliance are Training for Impact, Climate Change Adaption and Disaster Risk Reduction. 
As a tropical monsoon climate country, droughts and floods are a common disastrous occurrence. The disaster risk management and food security sector is necessary, as the climate affects agriculture, consequently destroying this country's economy. In order to create a more stable economy, Ethiopia must invest in water harvesting, irrigation and road infrastructure. As their primary source, agriculture can no longer burden the entire load of the money surge. The Adapting Agriculture to Climate Change project intends to conserve and genetically modify specific plants in order to adapt them to our future world affected by climate change. By diversifying the livestock and crops, implementing migration systems, contributing to the economy through non-farm activities, selling assets, educating the population on climate change and the creation of drinkable water systems, these solutions could possibly aid in ridding the country of food insecurity, health issues and an unstable economy. Overall, Ethiopia needs to decide whether to continue investing in agriculture or to change their investment into another area which will not be as affected by climate change in order to stabilise their economy.